Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. I hope you're all doing okay out there in these crazy times. So today I've got a very different video for you because I'm not looking at your usual stuff such as mini ITX cases or processors or graphics cards or anything like that. I'm looking at a NAS box. Now before you switch off, because I know networking, it bores me as well. Um, it's like kind of a means to an end for me. But I've been kind of looking at ways of trying to speed up my home networking. So gigabit speeds are all very well, but when you're limited to 125 megabytes a second peak, that does tend to put the brakes on things as far as transferring big files uh, goes. And that's, a, that's something I'm doing more of these days when I'm creating content for you guys. So I've been kind of looking at ways of upgrading that, whether it's through Wi-Fi or using bigger SSDs in my system, that kind of thing. And as you know, I'm a massive small form factor fan. And the problem is, if you're dealing with a mini ITX case like this one, um, you can't always cram in as not enough storage. So SSDs, yeah, they're great, but mini ITX motherboards only have either two or two, three or four SATA ports, um, maybe one or two M.2 ports. So you can't often connect that many devices to them in the first place. And also in cases such as this, you simply cannot house that many hard disks, you know, maybe one or two at most in most mini ITX cases. So when it comes to actually providing space for more than two hard disks in a big storage array or something like that to house terabytes and terabytes of data, they can come up short. Now, there are a couple of ways around this. Uh, number one is to use a motherboard with a 10 gigabit network port. Those don't exist on mini ITX motherboards, at least consumer boards at the moment. The other option, which I've found, is to use the Thunderbolt port on some of the motherboards. Now there are mini ITX motherboards out there that have Thunderbolt. Intel's new Z590 chipset motherboards will have, uh, plenty of them will have Thunderbolt, not all of them, but most of them. Um, and there are some really great options out there. So Thunderbolt 4, pretty much the, uh, the same as Thunderbolt 3 that's coming out with Z590, um, just enables you to kind of daisy chain devices and add a few more things uh, in, into that chain of connections. But what we're talking about here today is 10 gigabit networking. So how does that equate with, uh, with Thunderbolt? Well, there are such things as Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit network adapters. So if you're building a mini ITX PC or your own PC doesn't have um, a 10 gigabit network port using Thunderbolt is one option or pretty much for mini ITX it's your only option of getting 10 gigabit networking. So what is the benefit of 10 gigabit networking? Well it's all about the speed, uh, megabits per second, gigabits per second, whatever way you want to talk about it, megabytes a second. Um, standard 10 gigabit, sorry standard gigabit is as I mentioned earlier limited to 125 megabytes a second so that's a lot less than the even a basic SSD uh, which would be dishing out data at four or five hundred megabytes a second so having an external storage array um, and not having uh, that speed on tap that you would get from an SSD or even one of the latest fast hard disks it does kind of make it a bit unpalat unpalatable really and it's one of the reasons why I've looked to upgrade my home network. I do use a NAS mainly because I use a small PC that I'd like to have more storage in but there's just not the space. So what we've got here today is the Terramaster F4 422 and this on the back here has a 10 gigabit network port as well as gigabit ports backwards, compa uh, backwards compatible and all that kind of stuff. So what that means is that we can basically get 10 times the speed of, of gigabit through this NAS box. And that's way over a thousand megabytes a second, over a gigabyte a second. If you've got the storage array to match it, of course, with the hard disk, which unfortunately aren't quite there yet. So you're always gonna be limited by the storage medium. And in here, you can fit four hard disks, as you can see down the front. And whether you have a RAID zero array, RAID one, RAID five, RAID six, or whatever, you're not always gonna see or very rarely see anything much faster than maybe four or 500 megabytes a second. But if you can do that over a network and connect that to your PC, I can put this in my garage like 20, 30 meters away, that's potentially a real, a really big deal for me. Or even like home networking users that store lots of files in their NAS and that kind of stuff. So what we'll be doing today is just taking a look at this NAS, what you can actually use it for, and just how fast is it with four standard hard disks. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today and uh, trying to work out whether it's actually worth it over slower networking, um, perhaps considering other options as well, and looking at the interface, how easy it was to set up, the hardware that you need, and just maybe kind of coming to some conclusions at the end. So stick around and uh, let's take a look. 
Okay, so a couple of benchmarks to talk about here then. And uh, I've set up AJA Systems Benchmark and also Crystal Disk Mark to test the throughput over the network using the TerraMaster uh, F4 422 and uh, first of all the AJA systems benchmark just a 512 megabyte test file to see how things perform and uh, as you can see some pretty high numbers there and what I've done is just mapped a network drive uh, to my PC with a shared folder that's created on the NAS and uh, yeah as you can see some pretty high numbers here we're looking at 501 megabytes a second write speed and 416 megabytes a second read speed so that is absolutely blistering uh, much much faster than you'd see from a gigabit or two a two and a half gigabit uh, network and uh, moving over to crystal disk mark we've got numbers of 468 so pretty similar and 353 megabytes a second on the write speed Okay, so if we head down to the backup section, you'll see that it supports rsync backup and uh, also Time Machine. And uh, if we head back to the application section, uh, just a quick uh, run through here, because I'm not going to discuss all the features here. We're mainly concerned with the 10 gigabit networking speeds, but I thought I'd just have a quick look around the operating system and see what uh, applications are available. So there's obviously Box support. It has its own multimedia server as well. Uh, Dropbox Sync, uh, like a lot of its competitors do as well. Google Drive Sync. And uh, something that may or may not interest you is iTunes server support as well. So uh, as well as Plex, if you're tied into the iTunes e ecosystem, there is support for the iTunes server. And uh, scrolling a bit further down, you've got OneDrive support as well. And uh, there's Plex Media Server, of course. And uh, also uh, Qubit Torrent as well. If you want to run your legal torrents uh, directly off the NAS, you can do that as well using that application. So just a final bit of exploring. Uh, this is the file manager, which is where you can create uh, and sort out all your shared folders. So this is the testing folder that I'll be using and I've uh, accessed that from my PC and mapped it as a network drive, which is all pretty easy to do. And the NAS also supports remote access as well. So if you are trying to access your files uh, from outside your network, you can do that like a lot of uh, its competitors can do. And that's all pretty easy to set up. But again, here today, we're just focusing on the actual networking speeds that we can get on a home network. Okay, interesting. Um, so those speeds, those speedy speeds, <laughs> speedy speeds, where did that come from? Those high speeds, ridiculously fast speeds were kind of interesting because they were, they weren't as fast as I thought they were going to be. I, I wasn't really sure what speed I would be getting from a standard RAID array with four hard disks. I'm guessing that you need either some sort of caching in the uh, NAS box or you need more hard disks so that, or, you know, just like typical RAID array, you do see speed increases the more hard disks you add because the, the data is kind of spread across them. I, I get that. Um, but on the other hand, we're getting speeds here that are way above one gigabit, way above two and a half gigabits, which is now common on a lot of motherboards out there. Not so much laptops, but certainly with motherboards like the latest AMD and Intel motherboards do have two and a half gigabit um, network ports. But what we're looking at here is uh, speeds far in excess of that. You know, four, 500 megabytes a second is absolutely crazy over a home network. And this unit here only costs 400 pounds. So that's, that's and if you kind of total everything up, if you create some kind of crazy SSD RAID array in your PC, going for hard disks and adding this on is gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper given that your typical uh, four terabyte SSD is still very, very expensive. So I'm kind of interested to see what you think about this as well. So do let me know in the comments below. Uh, we're getting some crazy speeds from 10 gigabit networking and it's now not that difficult to actually add it into your home network. So especially if you're into small form factor systems like me, there isn't. there are very, very few ways where you can add it to start with, but on the flip side of that, you've got the fact that these very, very small cases are very limited in their storage options. So a lot of people I know that um, that have either PCs or small form factor PCs also own a, uh, a NAS, a network attached storage enclosure, for that reason. So 
yeah, very, very interested to hear what you, what you think of this. Um, home networking isn't something that's new to me, but I don't really know that much about it. It's always been quite boring. <laughs> um, but that's until you actually start to see the benefits of it, like I've seen here today. I mean, 500 megabytes a second, um, that's five times faster than what I've been seeing over my gigabit home networking. Um, of course, Wi-Fi might have an impact. If you've got a super, wi super fast Wi-Fi connection, you might consider doing like some kind of external storage for that. Um, but really, I think the TerraMaster uh, F4 422 is kind of interesting. And there's, there's sort of the, the, the budget end of 10 gigabit networking, but you're still getting those crazy fast speeds. So I'm going to investigate this a bit, a bit further because what I want to try is the, um, the Thunderbolt uh, to 10 gigabit adapter because that will mean that any device with a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 support um, or Thunderbolt 4 support port, not support, support as well, um, will be able to access 10 gigabit networking. So I'm expecting that, adap that adapter to arrive relatively soon. So we'll be checking that out and how you can actually plug it into a mini ITX PC to get 10 gigabit networking. And all that hardware, including everything here, will be listed in my description uh, below. So you can check out the bits and uh, maybe you've already got some of it. Let me know in the comments about what you think here today. I'm very much at the at the start of my home networking journey here. So kitting out the lab with some faster networking and that kind of thing. So do let me know, always interested to hear what you think about it. Maybe there's some real experts out there because I'm just investigating here really, not really a, a full review, just an investigation. So yeah, I'd like to thank TerraMaster for sending over the uh, F4422, I think I've got that right. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think about, in, about the video and the topic in the comments below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.